going to be doing an unboxing today for the latest release of Dungeon, the fantasy board game. And this is a Dungeons and Dragons version. I don't remember if the one I played in the past was Dungeons and Dragons. I don't remember it being it. Could have been. But the uh, this is one of the first games I remember ever playing in this kind of genre that wasn't a standard Monopoly, typical Hasbro, uh, Mattel type board game. Uh, so this is the one I played this one even before I played Dungeons and Dragons or any miniatures game at all. So it's a little bit of nostalgia. The box is very thin which kind of uh, kills my typical storage method of using Plano. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find uh, Plano to fit in that. But uh, we'll open it up and take a look at it. We'll take a look at the back first. You can see you have the, the board does seem a little different. You know it's been so long since I've even opened up a version of this. I'm talking before I was 13 years old I think. Uh, you can see you have the different sections of the dungeon kind of color coded by the level of the monsters that you can find there. The game doesn't retail for a whole lot either. I believe it's $19.99 retail in the U.S. So if you get it from an online retailer or any place as a discount, you pay even less than that. So we open it up. Get two white D6s with it. We have kind of a matte finish rules fold out. Shows uh, the different heroes and kind of how the board game sets up. Folds on into that, you know, a description of some of the cards. And the other side of it gives you the sequence of play, how the combat works. what to do with the loot and the wizard spells and then uh, a little appendix that explains some of the treasure and then another little appendix that has the uh, rules for solo play it's like we get three stacks of cards right here and these are fairly tiny they may even be tinier than the Euro board game cards. I know they're tinier than the uh, standard mini US card game cards. I'll grab some sleeves here in a minute and compare them. You get a sheet of tokens. Looks like we have some plus tokens, some tokens for 1 through 12. I believe those are going to be used to mark the different dungeon rooms. So in case you flip over a monster that shows you so instead of having the monster on the board, you can put the monster to the side with a token showing that what monster's in what room. Looks like we have some gravestone tokens here. You can see those. I believe these are lose a turn tokens. And then you have some hero tokens. You have a couple of blue ones here. They look like a couple of dwarves. It's a female dwarf and a male dwarf. The stand pieces look like they just... Uh, cross pieces that fit into there to hold the character up so not not high production value there but I mean it's not a very expensive game anyway so it's like we have a couple of human people there just uh I guess they're the fighter maybe that's the cleric the dwarves are have a couple of halflings like they're probably the rogue and then you have a couple of elves, they look like they're probably the wizard. The tiles are the same thing on the other side. And then we have a game board. Looks like it's a four section, so a quarter fold. The board does seem a little bigger. I want to say the version I played just had a bifold board. It was maybe a little smaller, you can see. It's like you have maybe the starting section, the level two section over here, uh, level threes, level fours, level fives, and then level six. 
So you have all the rooms that the hero can walk around. Looks like the spaces are a little cleverly hidden. They're not super distinct, but you can tell where they are. So it kind of blends into the cobblestone effect. Looks like we have a kind of a description of the different characters, their symbol, uh, how they find secret doors, the safest levels for them, and how many gold they need to win, the little sequence of play, kind of uh, some results of what happens when the monster attacks, only if you did not kill it first. And then you have like a, a key for the map showing the different levels the, and the doors. And you see those numbers I showed you earlier, you have one through 12 on the board, so I imagine you just stick the monster card on the end. This isn't the first game with this little uh, thing to it. And you just stick the token somewhere on the board to show that that token corresponds over here. I'm gonna say Rune Bound has that little uh, feature to it too. I'm going to grab some uh, card sleeves real quick and come back and open up the cards. So I have a couple of different card sleeves here. These are both the Fantasy Flight brand and you have the European, or the mini European board game size. And then you have the, which are bigger than the mini American board game size. So I'm going to take one of them out real quick and hold it next to the cards to see. You can kind of see they're quite a bit bigger than that. So these are smaller than other standard board game sizes. So I may have to do a little research to figure out what sleeve fits it. They, uh, they have a couple of different sleeves. Fantasy Flights are mostly standard sizes. They have a couple other different companies that make sleeves. You know, one of them has a Kickstarter going right now, and Mayday Games has a huge selection. So we'll take a look at some of the cards here. They're a glossy stock. They're not super thick, but they're not super flimsy either. You have level six monsters. Level five, level four, three, two, and one. So like we have some other monster cards here too. I want to say in the old game there was enough to, to correspond to each room worth of monsters. It's like we have some treasures here. Lots of level four treasures. Level threes. Gonna be one for each each level one through six. Yeah, we have some more level five monsters here. A couple of level six. Check real quick. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve. Twelve level six rooms. They do stick together a little. And there are 12 level 6 monsters here. So I imagine that's going to be the same for all of them. Looks like we have some spell cards here. And they look like they're just two sided with the symbol. I think that may be like a teleport, a lightning bolt, a fireball, and then we have some of the level 6 treasures, and some level 5s and some more level 4s. There may not actually be enough monsters to Go one for each room. Okay. 
Looks like there may be 12 of each, each level. We'll look at some of the uh, higher level monsters that come in and uh, some of the higher level treasures real quick. So you have stuff like, these are the level six, a purple worm. So we have a couple of those, a slide trap, a witch. You see they have, uh, I think these are the numbers that it takes to defeat them. For a rogue, a cleric, a fighter, a wizard, a fireball, a lightning bolt. On the 2D6, you have a couple of witches, a black dragon, a blue dragon, a carrier crawler, a Draco witch, and an evil wizard. And then some of the stuff you can get for the sixth level treasure, you get a magic sword, which has some game mechanics, a silver coffer, which you see the most of them look like they're probably going to be worth money. Looks like money is the way to win the game. So, stuff like statues and it's a jade idol, huge sapphires, huge rubies, necklaces, diamonds, crystal ball. So. That's just kind of a, a look at the things that you get in the new version of the dungeon board game released by Wizards of the Coast.